Hello, my name is Dr. Randy Davila. I'm an assistant professor of data science at the University of Houston downtown, as well as an adjunct professor at Rice University in the computational and applied mathematics department. This YouTube playlist is made specifically for my students taking courses in machine learning and data science, as well as statistical and machine learning. We will be covering topics such as basic Python programming, working with Jupyter Notebooks, working in IDE search such as Visual Studio Code, version control with GitHub, data visualization, supervised and unsupervised learning, and if time permits, uh, um, reinforcement learning. The students' grades will be entirely decided on their final uh, project, which is a GitHub repository, il not illustrating, demonstrating prof proficiency in all of these areas. Each student will be required to make a GitHub account, make a GitHub repository, and post everything that they learn in an organized and um, professional manner for others to view, hopefully their employers in the future. So with that being said, I should probably mention how the students will set up their environments. And by that, I mean, how are they gonna interact with the code? So if I share my screen, I will move some things around. Each student will be required to download and install the Anaconda Navigator, which is a suite of IDEs used to interact with various programming languages, such as Python, R, and Julia, which are, to me, the top three programming languages for a machine learning data scientist, though there are others for different disciplines in the data field, such as SQL, Excel, etc. So Anaconda is the must is a must and will be the primary way that my students will interact with programming at the very beginning. Later, I'll ask that all my students download Visual Studio Code. And each student will have to make a GitHub repository, as should be obvious from what I mentioned earlier. Now, this video is primarily targeted at the first two weeks of class. So I should probably tell my students now how they should interact via the Anaconda Navigator. So if I open up the Anaconda Navigator, I'll see, I see a screen in front of me that looks something like this. Yours will be something like this, I mean. This is a suite of IDEs or integrated development environments where you will be able to um, interact with a given programming language. So the primary, yeah, the primary IDE that we will use at the beginning and actually throughout the semester will be Jupyter Notebooks because Jupyter Notebooks are an interactive and descriptive way of writing code to share with others. It's my belief that any uh, practicing data scientists should be able to share their code in a meaningful way with not only other programmers and data scientists, but also with people that aren't familiar with programming. And Jupyter Notebooks are the way to do this. Again, this is my opinion. So to launch a Jupyter Notebook, click on this little button here. This will open up your uh, primary web browser and show you a list of your files hosted locally on your computer. Now, if you would like to make a new notebook, simply go to the folder that you want to. So for example, documents, maybe I'll go to programming practice and I'll make a new notebook in here. When you click on new, you'll see well, actually, I should probably tell you how to make new folders within this Jupyter Notebook setting. I can go ahead and click new, say folder. And where did it go? Somewhere in here is a new folder. Um, these untitled folders. Yeah, here it is right here. Untitled folder. Let's go ahead and change the name by clicking this little button here, going up and saying rename. Um, and I will say example notebook 2022. All right, notice the underscores. I don't like naming directories or IE folders with spaces or any files for that matter. So this is what I'm gonna call it. I rename it, there it goes. I'm gonna open it up. And now I have an empty directory because I haven't made anything in here yet. So to open a new Jupyter notebook, go up here, select new, and then select the kernel that you'll be using. You can see that I have several here. 
This is because I'm constantly switching between Python and Julia, different versions of Julia, and then I even have a custom test environment. All you need to know how to do is click on Python 3, open it up, and you'll see what um, should be common to all of you at this point when you open this up. I don't think mine looks any different. Maybe my um, top half looks a little different because I made it smaller. But generally speaking, you will op open this up and see an empty cell with a blinking cursor. The blinking cursor indicates that you are in a code cell. The Jupyter notebooks that I will provide in the descriptions of my videos will not all be code cells. Some of them will be called markdown cells. So to illustrate the difference, I should probably run a few. To run a code cell, type in Python code, such as assigning the variable x to be one, and maybe assign the variable y to be equal to two, where I went from one line to the next simply by pressing enter. You can press enter as much as you want to make your cells as um, small as you would like. And then I can say something like print, which is the standard Python print function, x plus y. Now to run this code, press shift enter, and then you see that a three appears. So to run code, once you've written it out in a Jupyter notebook, you press shift, hold it down, and then enter, and then that code will run. And on that note, I forgot that we most likely, not most likely, we should have started with the first program of any programmer, which is to print out hello world. I print this out, the string, press shift enter, it prints out. Now those are co code cells. To run them, you type in code, press enter to make more spaces, but to run them, press shift enter. Now in the notebooks that I'll, I will be providing in the descriptions of my videos, you will see a lots of markdown. Markdown is a way for me to make the documents look as they should appear in your final project or in my students' final projects. So for example, this would be if I wanted to get rid of this, I just get, I press delete. I can change this cell now to a markdown cell. I can put lines like this, and then I can put pound symbol, my first Jupyter notebook. And then I can give a description. So in this notebook, we um, print a world or something like that. This single pound symbol uh, it means that this is going to be a title for this cell. And you can see if I press shift enter, it looks bold, it's bigger, it's a title. Now, for a list of um, uh, markdown syntax, find a link in the description below. But really, if you ever forget, just do markdown, um, maybe cheat sheet, just search that in Google, look it up, and then you'll have headings, how to make bold text, and all of these things. However, the notebooks that will be provided in the descriptions of the videos going forward will have examples of how to do all the basics, such as including images, including um, hyperlinks, uh, making bullet points, things of this nature. So for my students, this is where you should get started. You should know how, well, you should download Anaconda, download VS Code, open up the Anaconda Navigator, make a sample Jupyter Notebook, get used to working with that, even if you don't know anything other than the print. And then um, after that, download the notebooks that I make for you, put them in a folder that you know where they're at, and then find that folder. For example, I think, um, yeah, so just maybe, Find the folder where you save them. Open it up. And then you'll see that I've made you nice looking folders and not nice looking notebooks for you to play with, All right? So in the following few videos, I will be exposing you to the basics of Python programming related to data science. And it will be sort of a crash course. After I expose you to the basics, then we'll start using VS Code and version control. And from there, we'll get into the real um, cool things, or not cool, the, um, the interesting things 
from machine learning. Thank you for watching and um, I'll see you next time.